Boom, baby. What is going on, everyone? Welcome to the Pokey Office. My name is Colin. Today, we're going to be ranking all of the Scarlet and Violet sets up to and including Surging Sparks and what I think is the best sealed investment right now and what I think is the worst. We got the S tier ones. We got the D tier ones. And we're going to go through them all. I had to go create my own tier maker uh, list because I couldn't find one that had all the sets up to Surging Sparks. So we're going to do that. It's October, almost the end of October already. Time is flying. We're getting ever closer to Surging Sparks. All the hype is out and about, and we're going to rank everything. Let's go. All right, here we are. We got all the sets. Scarlet and Violet base set, Paldia Evolved, Obsidian Flames 151, Paradox Rift, Paldian Fates, Temporal Forces, Twilight Masquerade, Shrouded Fable, Stellar Crown, Surging Sparks. Starting off with base set. I'm going to put this in like a C tier category. And remember, we're ranking this based on what I think is a good investment where you can do some damage to your money in a good way. <laughs> That's a terrible way of saying it. But I think Scarlet and Violet base set, I mean, odds are not good that Scarlet and Violet base set is going to go anywhere. Currently, like if we just take a look here, Scarlet and Violet base set, it's still under $100 in the market price. And base sets just historically have not done great. Sword and Shield base set is like, it's okay. It's over $200 now, um, but it's not great. Sun and Moon base set, it's still not great. So I just don't think you're ever going to get a huge gain, though at a sub $100 booster box, I could see some gains happening. You're just going to wait a little bit of time. So this one, Scarlet and Violet base set is in it like B tier to C tier. It's going to take some time. It's I don't think you're going to lose money on it if you're buying it at sub 100, but I don't think it's the best opportunity to uh, actually make some money off of your purchases. Paldi Evolved, on the other hand, this is a different story. Let's quickly take a look before we rank it here. $137, so still below MSRP. Remember MSRP on Scarlet and Violet era booster boxes, 163 in that realm. So still under MSRP, and over the last three months, it's kind of just holding in the 130. If we look back... Like you could buy this thing for sub $100 not too long ago. So in some respect, the time has passed to invest in Paldi Evolved. That being said, it's a pretty strong set. We haven't seen what's like the last third of Scarlet and Violet era. So if that's really good, Paldi Evolved might become a little bit more forgotten about. But as of right now, when we're these like, I think it's 10 sets in, including the specialty sets, uh, Paldi Evolved is one of the front runners for being the best set. I'm not saying it is the best set. I'm saying it's a front runner for being the best set in Scarlet and Violet era so far. But have you missed your opportunity to make some money? I think, I think, this is just all speculation, by the way. But it wouldn't surprise me one bit if, if Pokemon sees, hey, Paldi Evolve's pretty popular, 151's pretty popular, Twilight Masquerade's pretty popular, we should reprint these and make some more money. So I think that Paldi Evolved, it's, it's one of the ones where I'm a little bit hesitant that to invest in like to put my money into Paldi Evolved. I'm going to put it in C tier because I still don't think it's bad. I think all of these booster boxes are actually quite good. If you're willing to hold for three to five years, everything's going to make you some money. But best to worst, Paldi Evolved is on the lower end of the spectrum right now. I might even uh, change it like that where I put Scarlet and Violet base set above. Okay, Obsidian Flames, let's take a look here really quickly. $120. This one has been on the increase. Remember, a year ago, $91 was its low. It was sub $100 for quite a while. And now all of a sudden, it's just been on the rise. Here's the thing. I don't think anyone is going to be like, yo, we got to open up some Obsidian Flames like three years from now, are people going to be, I can't wait to open up Obsidian Flames. I don't think that's a thing. I think it's one of these sets that if you look at Darkness Ablaze right now, we're finally getting Darkness Ablaze over the hump of what MSRP was. It's like $155 booster box now. That's a, a long time ago that Darkness Ablaze came out. So I don't know. I'm not convinced. Obsidian Flames, I think it's got to be down here. It's, it's not a terrible set. I don't think it is at all. But in terms of investment dollars, I think there's better, which is why we're moving on to 151. If you have been living under a tree for the last little bit, 151 has absolutely exploded. And now here's the big thing. 
I only included the Elite Trainer Box in here, but other 151 products are great deals right now too. If you live in Canada and you can get access to the Costco deals on 151 right now, like we are just this week getting the stock of ETBs of 151 along with the two tins. They're coming to Canadian Costco's this week. Boom, baby. I have been cooking with the 151 packs, with the 151 sealed products. I've been grinding hard trying to churn and burn. But remember, remember when I told you that I was selling two of my Evolving Skies boxes? Well, here's what I did. And I already won. I put that money from my Evolving Skies boxes into more 151 and turned around and sold it. And boom, bonitis. Boom goes the dynamite. All of the fun things that are said at the Poke office has happened. Uh, totally. 151 is S tier. There is plenty of cash to be made on the 151. Reprints aside, they could reprint it right now. There's no question about it. They could reprint 151 right now. But as of right now, people are hungry for 151. There's a hype about 151. And I've said it in recent videos. As new people come into the hobby with the EV set, with the Battle Partner set, with the um, Team Rocket set, people are going to, oh, there was a 151 set of all the Kanto Pokemon? Yes, please. I need that. I can't believe I missed out on it. That's going to happen. Trust me on this. Trust me on this. There's no way in my mind that Pokemon does not reprint 151. There's so much money for Pokemon Company to make reprinting 151 because people will just continue to buy it up. It's that good. It's that good. We got to move on because I'm just on, I'm on, uh, on a rant about 151. Paradox Rift. Let's take a look here. So $104. I got such a good deal on this booster box not too long ago. I paid like 800 Canadian shipped to my door for a case, which is outrageously good. Like I never find stuff that cheap. Um, so at that price, it is such a good set. You look at some of the single cards, the Roaring Moon, the Iron Valiant, the Altaria, the Iron Hands, uh, the Garchomp. Like, personally, I'm looking to buy up those single cards from Paradox Rift 2 because they're so cheap right now. I don't know what happened to Paradox Rift. I actually think it's a super fun set. And the prices are really, really low right now. So, I'm going to put this one... I don't know. I think Paradox Rift could be a whole lot of fun to open in the future. And there's still a lot of it out there. It's one of those things at $104 for a booster box. How do you go wrong? Anything like sub $110. And I think it is a great purchase in Pokemon. Uh, and if you've watched any of my videos, you know my strategy. Like I'm one to buy early and then just hold it. And of course, I don't follow that exactly here at the Poke Office because I do the live streams. So I open quite a bit of it as well. So I buy some to hold and some to open on the live streams. But if I was just like not willing to turn and burn like I've been doing, I would be buying and then just setting it in the closet right away. Who cares if you could find it 5 to $10 cheaper later on? Like 5 to $10 makes no difference three to five years from now. That's my opinion. That's, that's my whole strategy. Buy early. Buy when it's right at wholesale prices, right when the set comes out, and then set it and forget it, baby. All right, moving on. Paldean Fates also, I think that this is a really, really fun set. Here's my hesitation with Paldean Fates. It's another specialty set. We're seeing right now, they just made a new box like a couple months ago where Crown Zenith got a new box. That set's already almost two years old. Paldean Fates is what not even a year old so certainly there's an opportunity for pokemon company to reprint paldean fates too it seems like the specialty sets get reprinted a lot you look at celebrations from a few years back that thing was still sitting in walmart like the collection boxes were still sitting in walmart years after celebrations was released pokemon go not so much because it wasn't that fun of a set crown zenith a really fun set and really uh, they've reprinted it a ton 151 we already talked about it's a really fun set a really popular set there's just no way in my mind that they don't reprint it Paldean Fates really fun set and thinking about how good it is compared to Shining Fates and how much they reprinted Shining Fates 
Think about how good it is compared to Hidden Fates. And my spicy take, I said it a couple weeks back, I think Paldean Fates is better than Hidden Fates, personally. Some of you might disagree, but it's really good and it's really up there. So they've got to probably reprint Paldean Fates too. That is why I'm a little hesitant. I still think it's good. I don't think it's great right now. It's kind of mid. Mid for Paldean Fates. And Paldean Fates, currently... 44 bucks like it's not too expensive that's why i don't mind it for an elite trainer box it's just not the best temporal forces here's my thoughts on it temporal forces a really really fun set the pull rates just got so challenging like it it started to feel like we were back in sword and shield era and is that a good thing or a bad thing it made the chase cards really hard to get but it also means that when you get those chase cards it's like Mwah! that feels amazing uh, it means a little bit extra when you pull a really hard chase card. The On the opposite end of the spectrum are Raging Bolt and Gouging Fire and Walking Wake and Iron Leaves, Iron Crown. I, did I miss any? Are those actually going to continue to be popular Pokemon moving forward? That's what I'm a little bit hesitant to say yes or no on. Like already in the most recent sets, we haven't seen the ancient and future Pokemon again. So is that just like a little sub niche of Scarlet and Violet era? Or is that going to be an ongoing thing? I have questions about it. I don't know. I'm going to put it in B tier. I don't know. I do really like Temporal Forces. Twilight Masquerade is another one. Let's take a look. Okay, here it is. And this one going absolutely bananas. It's already over MSRP. Are you kidding me? I told you a while ago. I overspent on Twilight Masquerade at the start. I was like, oh no. I bought five cases of it when I usually, when a new set comes out, I usually used to buy three. So I bought five of Twilight Massacre and I was like, oh, this set isn't going to be that good. And then we start opening it and I went to Card Party and I'm a broken record because I've said this story a million times, but Twilight Massacre just took off and it's such a fun set to open. So is it a good investment? Oof, I'd be hard pressed to say it's a good investment. Now you missed your opportunity. Going back here, like in the last year, it's not not even nearly a year old at its at its low it was 101 dollars, and now it's spiked to 26 like that's actually a bigger gain than that it's like 55 percent gain over the last six months which is absolutely wild wild stuff uh i think you missed your chance if you're on the twilight masquerade train i think if anything you gotta wait and hope that twilight masquerade is going to get reprinted because it's just proven to be such a popular set and you have that Greninja. It's the biggest chase card out of Scarlet and Violet era so far. It could be the biggest chase card out of Scarlet and Violet era total. We don't know because there's still more sets to come. But I think Greninja is going to continue to be a very popular chase card. You also have the Perrin card. You have the Carmine card. It's a really, really fun set. Way better than I ever anticipated Twilight Masquerade doing. But I think it is an absolute beaut. That being said, I'm going to put it... I don't think it's a good investment right now. Too expensive. Too expensive. Speaking of not too expensive, Shrouded Fable is one of those ones where it's like, mm, people are not opening Shrouded Fable. The actual single prices of Shrouded Fable are really actually holding decently strong. And my opinion of that is that people are not opening the set. People are not liking the set. I mean, $29 for an Elite Trainer box? Here's a spicy take. Can Shrouded Fable be actually a really good investment right now? This is where I'm questioning, and I might lose some of your favor here, but Shrouded Fable, it's one of those sets, kind of like Pokemon Go, where it's a specialty set, it doesn't have a booster box, and people don't like it. Now, Pokemon Go has proven that it was not a good investment whatsoever. Shrouded Fable, it actually does have some really fun cards. So how does that line up? Like at $30 for an Elite Trainer Box, that's so cheap. And it has the Cassiopeia. It has the Earthen Vessel. It has some really great illustration rares like uh, the Houndoom and the Dusk Noir and I don't know. I can't think off the top of my head. There's a bunch of them that I really like. I got to move this down though. Like it's okay. But if people continue not to like it, then it proves to not be a good investment. So it's one of those ones that's really on the balance people don't like it but it's really cheap and it's actually got some great cards 
but people aren't opening it, so it might be short printed. Like there's pros and cons. I actually need to move it one down. I can't I can't convince myself that it's a good investment, though I do have a decent chunk of it just because at the prices I've been getting it at, I can't say no. I can't say no. Okay, okay. B tier. <laughs> I can't can't keep my mind up. Here's a spicy take. Some people have been telling me that I'm too hard on Stellar Crown. And that could be true. Could be false. I don't think it's a great set. I think it's a really fun set. I don't think it's a great set. But I've started seeing Stellar Crown go on sale. People are not buying Stellar Crown as much as uh, people are excited about Surging Sparks. So if anything, I think there is an A-tier opportunity with Stellar Crown. Apparently, Terrapagos is the bee's knees with the new generation of Pokemon lovers. And there's just... There's some really good illustration rares in the set, and it's cheap. Stellar Crown right now, 108 bucks. I've actually seen it like in the Canadian marketplace, cheaper than this. Uh, it's on sale. Um, I think it was Zephyr Epic, if any Canadians are watching, where it was just on sale for a pretty solid price point. Um, so I think it's a good opportunity. I don't think it's a great set. It's a fine set. But I think it's a good opportunity to get in if you're not having too many Stellar Crown booster boxes right now. Last but not least, and maybe the most important one, 2024's Pokemon season is all hinging on uh, Surging Sparks. And this is what I think about it. S tier. You know my strategy. Buy early, buy often, and just like get in while the going is good. I don't think there's going to be an opportunity to get Surging Sparks cheaper than right at the very start. That's the way Pokemon trends are moving from what I've seen. Uh, like for a long time, you could wait for a month until the set released, like after the set released, and then buy a little cheaper than when it was first released. I don't think that's happening anymore. We're seeing it with Surging Sparks with the pre-orders up, with uh, distributors cutting some allocation to people. So... I think Surging Sparks is, uh, get it while the going is good. I think it's going to be really popular. Anyways, here's my final tier list. I went away too fast. S tier, 151, especially if you're in Canada. If you're in the States and have already missed that train, uh, maybe it's like more down here. So 151 is very um, specific as to where you live. Okay, for me, Canada 151, I've just been absolutely crushing it. Surging Sparks, it's the bee's knees. Everyone's talking about it. People are getting in on it, I think, by now, by early. That's the reason why I'm putting it in an S tier, especially if you're willing to hold for three to five years. There's no better time than now. A tier, Paradox Rift and Stellar Crown for different reasons. Both are cheap. Stellar Crown's going on sale. Paradox Rift is still cheap. And if anything, I think Paradox Rift is a great set. Stellar Crown is a fair set. But when you buy cheap... It's always good. B tier, Scarlet and Violet, it's just a base set. Paladin Fates, I think it's really fun, but odds of it getting reprinted are quite high in my opinion. Temporal Forces, a really good set. I just don't know if it has the Pokemon to actually bring it into greatness. And Shrouded Fable, I just can't make my mind up about it because it's actually quite a fun set with the illustration rares, but no one likes it at all. Paladin Fates, Obsidian Flames, both sets are very different. Obsidian Flames, I don't think, is nearly as good as Paldea, or Paldea Evolved, but Paldea Evolved is already expensive. You've kind of missed the mark on it. Obsidian Flames is like, you're kind of almost already missing the mark on it. And Twilight Masquerade, you just have missed the mark if you don't have it already. So that's what I have for you. No packs today, but hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to subscribe to the channel with bell notifications on. Hit the like button, leave a comment. Appreciate you, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace!